The first and most commonly used of the timers is the on delay. It has a trigger input and an output. The symbol on it tells us that when the trigger input goes high, the time function starts and the output will turn high after the time delay has elapsed. When the trigger signal turns low, the output will turn low immediately. We'll document as we go. Next, we'll choose our time base. So we can choose hours and minutes, minutes and seconds, or seconds and hundredths. That's fine for our purposes. We'll set it to uh, three point, let's make it 3.40 seconds. And we'll OK that. And we can now run the simulation and test it. We toggle our input, timer runs, and the output turns on at 3.4 seconds. And when we turn the input off, the output turns off as we expected from the block symbol. A useful function of the simulation is the power switch down here. And if we press this, we're effectively powering down the logo. And we can see that the we have no status for the inputs and outputs. When we power back on again, the timer starts again because the input is still on and it times out after 3.4 seconds. There are some instances where this would be inconvenient. We want to maintain the status through a power cut and the remanence or retentivity allows us to do that. So we'll switch off, we'll turn off the simulation, we'll double click and we'll turn on retentivity. We'll run the simulation again and Here we've timed out to 3.4 seconds. We'll interrupt the power. And when we release the power interruption, the output turns back on just as it was before the power was interrupted. Now this is even more sophisticated and we can interrupt the power during the timing sequence. So we start, power off after about one and a half seconds delay, power back on again, and the timer continues from where it left off. Again, a very useful function. Finally, we have the protection active, and this will control whether or not the user can adjust the time setting from the logo's front panel. We can also have a look and see what happens in a ladder mode. So if we convert to ladder, we can see that we get a very simple input one starts the timer, the symbol as before. The timer itself doesn't have an output. We can't connect to anything following the time delay, but it does have contacts and we can use that to switch the output relay coil. The next on our series of timers is the off delay. The off delay has a trigger input, as the on delay did, but it also has a reset input. So we'll use input two for that and connect the output to Q1 as before. Go into selection mode, edit the parameters, document as always. And we'll just set up a five second time delay on this. We can then have a look at the off delay function block. And we can see that when the trigger switches high, the output will switch high immediately. From the function block symbol, we can see that when the trigger switches high, the output will switch high immediately. When the trigger switches low, the timing function starts and the output will switch low when the timer has expired. Switching to simulation mode, as before, we switch on the input. Notice the output turns on immediately, but the timer does not run. We switch off, giving us the falling edge on the trigger, and the timer starts, and when the time delay expires, 
the output resets. We mentioned that this function block has a reset input and we can turn on the output as before with input one, but notice that the reset overrides the input. So it will always take priority. If we run the timer again and let the timer start, we can reset it before it times out and effectively abort the cycle early. When we switch to out of simulation mode, we'll just have a look at the ladder representation of this. And as we'd expect, we've got the timer again, input one, input two going to the reset and a contact of the timer itself switching the output. The next in our series of timers is the on-off delay. This timer has delays both on trigger going high and trigger going low, and this is indicated in the function block diagram. We'll set up the timer as before, documenting as we go. We'll set the on time to five seconds. So we'll set the off time to three seconds. And we'll OK that. We can expand or monitor the parameters and the actual value, run the simulator. And as we turn on, we can see the actual time counting up. And at five seconds, Q1 turns off, turns on. And when we switch off the input, we see the timer actual again, counting up to three seconds before the output turns off. Retentivity works similarly to the other timers, that if we turn it on, we can survive a power cut and pick up where we left off. Note that the analog uh, values here for the trigger high delay and the trigger low delay can be fed from another analog function block. And similarly, the actual time can be fed out to a display or some other feature. Switching to ladder. There are no surprises here. As before, we can't connect anything following the on off delay, but we can use its contacts anywhere in the program. The fourth timer on our list is the retentive on delay. This has two inputs, the trigger as normal, and also has a reset input. Output will wire up as before. We can set the parameters on it. As always, do your documentation. And we'll set a time delay of four seconds on this. We'll expand the uh, parameters to keep an eye on what's going on. And here we can see the actual time and the preset time, or the, the time delay from the trigger. We run the simulation. And what we're expecting, given the symbol here, is that we're going to set the trigger high. That will start the time delay. And even if the trigger goes low again, the timer will time out and the output will turn on. So watching the simulator, we turn the input on. And after four seconds, the output turns on. We turn the input off and nothing happens. The output remains on. But we toggle the reset input, clears the output, and resets the actual time or accumulated time back to zero. We can run the timer again switch off and now hold the reset and we can see that that immediately cancels the retentive on delay there. So a normal operation, the action is retained 
uh, but you do have the ability to override with the reset pin. We have a look at the ladder mode for this. Turn off simulation into ladder mode and we can see it's the standard procedure here. The retentive on delay doesn't have an output that we can connect to, but we can use as many contacts of it as we need to. Thank you.